first time ever that the four of you are in yeah. the same room, so uh, yeah. it is a privilege for all of us to be here. So thank you so much for being here, everyone. Um, where do we start? <laughs> uh, first of all, congratulations to David for uh, for running the. For running the, the fastest uh, ever 800 meter, I think uh, you know all these people that are here uh, today. Uh, let me welcome Alberto Juan Torena from Thank you. Cuba. Thank you. Uh, Senior partner. <laughs> uh, Lord Sebastian Coe from Great Britain, Northern Ireland. Uh, Mr. Wilson Keith Cater. And uh, David Rudisha, that I already presented to you. Uh, gentlemen, shall we go back in history? Seb. Let's start with the senior part. Yeah, let's start with Seb. Do you remember uh, when you broke the world record for the first time? What Alberta's standing world record was? <laughs> Not only do I remember it, but I remember seeing him in Montreal and thinking I'm in the wrong distance. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I knew exactly what it was. And uh, when I, you know, when uh, I broke it in in Oslo, I was wasn't expecting to break it, and this was a record that uh, was sensational, sensational. And Alberto, do you remember, remember. when uh, Sebastian broke your yes, world record? I have, I have, <laughs> yes, I know. I have a clear picture because I, won, I was in the United States. And then it was the first time that the Cuban track team competed in the United States. And the people who welcomed me said, I have two news for you. <laughs> <laughs> what, what happened? What news? Two, one, one is good and one is bad. The good is you are here. <laughs> <laughs> and the second one said, broke your world record last night. Yeah. And then I realized that this, this guy who I admired very much was a, a great runner, mm. a very good runner. But one thing, he is a good runner, but as a person, he's a better person as a runner. I had the privilege to be a friend of my, my, my brother, Sebastian Cole. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, if I look back, so I don't remember that much because uh, maybe I was too young when Wonder ran, ran or ran. And then when I was starting running, so self also was uh, retired. And that time I was in Kenya, so you know the <coughs> television was not there, so I didn't see, really see that much. But when I came to Europe, so the names was there. <coughs> and then when I started running, so. My time was 145.70, and we were talking about 141.73. But it took me a while to say, okay, that record I think has been there too long. <laughs> 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 and I say I'm going after it, and I got it. Because it was almost 16 years when I broke it. And I was looking back, when he broke the record time when we were running very well, I was nine years. And then when I was still enjoying it, I said, maybe you can stay for another 16 yeah. years or so. <laughs> <laughs> so Rhodesia came, so I didn't enjoy that much to the history of 800. <laughs> but then, saying that, so talking about the Olympic champion in 800. Lord Serko, no, you, you, no, Olympic champion. <laughs> 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 Me, not. So, <laughs> So now I think so we are leaving the history of 800. If it's going to go continue, no medal in 800 meters in Olympic. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. the answer is going to answer that. So I think I, I move it this way, the history of 800. Yeah. Yeah. David, um, I don't think you knew that we were bringing these three legends here today. I think it's a bit of a surprise for you. So how do you feel being in the room sure. and this very special occasion? Yeah. Very 
very surprised to see the four world record uh, sitting together uh, like this today. Of course, uh, I didn't know even uh, if Wilson, uh, although I know Wilson stayed in Monaco, but I didn't know the, the other two gentlemen are going to be here. So uh, it's, you know, I'm, I'm surprised and uh, I'm very happy. You know, it is it's not something and easy to see people uh, sitting like this in a row. So it's, it's, it's very good. And, uh, I'm very happy to see that. Well, before we pass the floor on to uh, the journalists, um, Wilson had a little crazy idea before we got into the room, and he was uh, thinking of asking all you guys to try and run a 4 by 800 as a uh, in the opening ceremony of the London 2012, so... Let's go to real life. Yeah, okay. Maybe we take this off. Can we include it in the program? Well, you, if you allow me to run on a bike, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have 115 years between the two of us. Any, any oh questions way. from the floor? Neil? Um... It took you, your record lasted 16 years and your record lasted 13 years. How long do you think, how close do you think the record now is to its limit? I think that question would go to the <laughs> routine, it's still running. You don't think? Uh, the thing I say is, uh, because I don't know anyway uh, between Pandaren and Sepko how long it was. No, but mine was a little bit. Two years. 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 Seventy-seven, seventy-nine. It's in seventy-seven, seventy-nine. Seventy-six, seventy-seven, seventy-nine. In Sofia. Seventy-six, seventy-seven, seventy-nine. I took the record from Francesco Nero, Marcelo, great friend of mine, Marcelo Francesco Nero, un grande uomo, un grande uomo, un grande corredore. Gareggiava, gareggiava durissimo, durissimo. So, but the, you are asking for you this record belong to the new generation, belong to the future. 141, oh, 01, this belongs to the future, in my opinion. So the question I think so is, uh, if we can see, so it was 13 years, from 16 years to 13 years, so we are cutting three years, so maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say that I, in my case is a little bit different because I was a, a water miner. I was a runner. I, I, my basic race was uh, 100 meters. 
and they, I do not have the invitation as a person, as an athlete, to compete in both events in Montreal. Yes. I was refused the first offer by my coach. <laughs> said to me, you're going to run 800 and 400. I say no, because I was afraid, because 800 was the first race, and, sec and 400 was the second one. But that's why I always uh, talk, uh, talk about Italy. Italy is the key point of my career, because of my Fiasco Naro Marcelo, because the first time in life that I ran 800 was in Formia, with a great friend of mine, Elio Paponetti. <laughs> Elio Paponetti said, I am the Cristoforo Colombo of one today. <laughs> <laughs> because it was the first time I ran 800. And then I realized I have a chance to run. Because for the first time in my life, I ran 145.36. And then I convinced myself, from psychological point of view, from sentimental point of view, whatever you want to, to express. And then that's why I decided to run both. And then during Montreal, we change. We change a little bit the, the, the strategy and the philosophy of a hundred million because I, we, first lap was faster than, 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 than before because I passed 50.5, 50.5, faster than the other runner because they ran 800 and 1500, but I was a, a sprinter. And that's why I give me the opportunity to run easy. The, la the, the, the last lap. If you analyze the history, I never ran before in my life 800. Mm -hmm. Just two months before the Olympics, in Formia, in Havana, and in Montreal. Only two times, international level. <laughs> and and after, once in, after Olympics? Yeah, after the Olympics? No, not more, not, not much. Not <laughs> much. <laughs> only for you. <laughs> only, only for you. If, if you. if you revise the, the, the history, uh, I ran in row every single day of athletic for the first day to end uh, to the to the <coughs> end of the calendar because I ran 800 three times, 400 four times, and four by four. I am the only man who ran a complete calendar during the track and field in Olympic. The people who come wrong call me, hey, good morning every day. <laughs> <laughs> you call me hey, every day because you gave me the single best. You came every every day to the stadium. <laughs> It's a good example of why the distance, uh, unlike any other distance, attracts people from so many different backgrounds. If you're a 10,000 meter runner, you tend to know that you're going to be a 10,000 meter runner for much of your life. But, you know, this is a guy that ran fours. This is a guy that just runs eights. You sort of... I, I was coming up. Yeah, and, and, and I didn't start out anywhere near 800. I started out as a 3,000 meter runner. I'm running cross country. And I think that, uh, I think getting it right at 800 is, I think 800 is the toughest distance on the track to get it right. It demands so many different things. It demands the, the endurance of a 5,000 meter runner. It, it demands the speed of a, of a world, now a world class 400 meter <coughs> runner. And for me running, it's, it's interesting listening to this for me. I actually only felt comfortable at the distance when I knew I could run a 1500 as well. I knew that I was in very, very good shape for a 15 when I knew that I'd also mastered the 800. So for me, I, it was really important to do both. I think one of the risks that we've had is that the, the distance itself has continued to get quicker. And these guys are as good as they'll ever be. But I think that when we took one of the rounds out of the 800 meters in Los Angeles. And we basically made it a three <coughs> round competition with a day between the <coughs> semi and the final. It may have ceased to become truly an endurance event. Now that's a very personal view and I think that's why maybe, although we've still got athletes at the very highest level, I think the strength in depth at the distance isn't as strong as it used to be. If you go back through the ranking list, 10th or 11th place now on that ranking list, I'm guessing is not as quick as 10th or 11th 10 or 15 years ago, I don't know, 20 years ago. And I think that's probably because there's, there's slightly less endurance needed because you don't have as many rounds to cover. That's a personal view. 
Uh, no, for me anyway, so I could say, um, <coughs> talking about a rhythm of 800, and so it's very important because uh, like 800, except for say that is, is a special event. It's a sprint, it's a long distance, you know, so it's in between. <laughs> so to make the judgment, so it's not easy, but I was working on that because I was running anyway indoors, 1,000 meters. I have a record for 1,000 meters, but I was working on it to go slowly to 1,500. But uh, what happened was, uh, so 98, when I was running well in 97, I got malaria in 98, so I lose all the training, and then also I had to start to build it up again. And run 15 and 8, so you know you have to run 1,500 in 329 if you have to be <coughs> number one, top five in the world those days. So running 141 and running 329, I think so it was not going to be easy to make it even if I ran even 335. So so that was the reason why I didn't want to move to 1500 because was the standard was too high. A question to the three former world record holders. Uh, could David be the man, uh, the first man under 100 seconds? 140, or is it too early to talk about this? If we really want to make his life impossible, we'll say <laughs> 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 Nothing is impossible. <clears throat> Nothing is impossible. I, I, I'm not going to say that because that's unfair for, for him, but I think that my gut instinct, there's still some time to come out of that. So. Uh, my opinion is also maybe it's too early because uh, now, you know, so th this year I'm moving now to World Championship next year and uh, Olympic. So I think we still have to give time. But as I say, you know, the, the doors is open for somebody to run that time. But we are not putting pressure on him because I think, you know, anybody can come maybe <coughs> in two years' time because we can see there is the young people coming now running <coughs> to what they did yep. in Rieti. So, you know, it can be... So we don't have to say, so it's, it's too early to say that. Everybody runs 142 and get it. Sandro. 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 And that is what uh, I'm aiming for. So, then also with the season, uh, it's going to start uh, from next year. So, we have the World Championships and the Olympic the following year. So, that one might also hinder some, you know, some focus toward the uh, past time. But uh, I think myself, 140 is possible. But uh, below that, I say, uh, I don't. <laughs> Question for David. Uh, can, was, what was the moment in your, in your season you thought, now I can break the record? Was it after the race in Huizen when it was a remarkable evening when you were running so fast there? Or in Oslo? You know, uh, I was planning uh, the way I started planning from last year. I started planning, you know. To, to go for the record after Yeti and I broke the African record that I stayed for 20, the last 25 years. So that is where now I start the uh, focus uh, to break the world record. And uh, I was starting my season just along very well. But when running, after running African Championship, that is when I feel I'm ready because I just run very nicely in uh, attitude, you know, just feeling relaxing without uh, struggling too much. 1.42 in Nairobi, it's, uh, it's not easy. And then mm -hmm. I felt that I can go for the record. And then I told my coach, we discussed that we will not wait until we know the 80s as a perfect weather and everything is perfect there. But uh, we, we, we discussed and then we said, we don't want to, to keep to say until the reality. Let us try in uh, maybe in Berlin. That does not keep a uh, long time because I feel now I'm, I'm ready to, to go.
Also a question to the <coughs> former world record holders. Um, do you have any doubt who will be tomorrow evening the athlete of the year? Who is for you the athlete of the year? Alberto and Yeah, please. What maybe. are your personal opinions? Maybe he's right here. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I will be delighted maybe. because belong yeah? to my event. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, I can say it's, it's not easy. <laughs> But uh, because I think now Tokelson has been doing very well if you look at the history of the javelin. He has been <coughs> from Olympic World Champions and European Champion, Diamond League. So I think so, yeah, it's going to be really up to the finish line. So I don't want to say today I have to wait until tomorrow. But uh, I don't know <laughs> where you I have to put my money. But so maybe <laughs> see, so, uh, I have to wait a little bit. I'm the one who's supposed to be in politics. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, maybe in a way we were still just, because looking back the way Andrena was running, I just checked some videos and the way he was moving also was quite easy and very strong. I come to Sepko, who was a little bit short like me, you know, so we just had quick steps, very fast. And then Rodicia is long strides, very strong. So this, I think, if you have to look at so it's to analyze how people tell you, but then they, we have a different times and the different ways of training. And now I think it's more professional training than if I look at back when I was training in Kenya in my days when I was in school, so it was not more professional. But now people take to really <coughs> professional training. My father's rolling in his grave at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows the secret of 800 because yeah. looking from it's a tough distance. Tough distance. Yeah. Because yeah. I think maybe for the last 30 years, so it's only four people they have run also under 142, and uh, for the last 30 years or 40 years, so it's only four people broke uh, the record in 800. So I think so. It's, it's a little. It's not easy even to, to break. Yeah, I know. I, I only want to add one thing. I am very lucky that these three men come up when I retire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky, I'm lucky. Yeah, we felt that about you. Yeah, so that's very yes, nice. Stefan? Uh, yeah. yeah, a question to all the gentlemen. How important was the crowd, was the public in your specific races? Sorry? How important was the crowd, the public in, in your yeah. specific races? Very important, very important, very important. Particularly in a world record attempt, mm. because often you know, I think back to uh, I bro when I broke the record in, in Firenze in uh, 81. You know, I ran 700 meters on my own, certainly 600 meters. So, you, it's, you know, it, it often it's a lonely place. You're just running with no you know, big one not around you. So actually having the crowd getting excited and knowing what you're doing, following your progress, on, with the clock is, is a massive, massive help. Yeah, it, it our crowd is important. I remember in 1977, the, the Universiada in, in Sofia, everybody was shouting, everybody mm. was making clap, you know, and, and this motivated you, you know. 
give you an inspiration, give you a strength. Because the second one was Milovan Savic, 145.67. And then I was 143.44. I was running like set set, almost alone, all the way down. But the, the audience, the people, the environment, your friends, you know, this give you some inspiration and some extra strength to, to compete. And the crowd is, in my opinion, is part of a, of a life, part of a record, part of everything when they are competing in the, on the track. There is an athlete that could very easily have been sitting at this top table at, at, at that stage, and that's, of course, Mike Boyd. Oh, my God. We should never forget, you know, if, if I had a fifth, if I had a fifth great 800 meter run. Great. I know him. I know. I know. I was running jolly by jolly yeah. in, in, in Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf. Yeah. Jolly yeah. by jolly. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. the best yeah. yeah. It was an yeah. excellent, excellent man. Excellent man. Yeah, it's terrific. Excellent man. Yeah. Excellent So was your yeah. Right? yeah, I think so. The audience is really, you know, I mean, it's very important. Because I remember in Zurich, in Stockholm, Moscow, but in Zurich when I ran uh, 48.03 for the past 400, and uh, the last 50 meters I think was like another one kilometer. <laughs> 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 so on this, I think so, you know, the cross was really there to cheer me, you know, so I could not feel the, the pain, but um, I managed to go home anyway with the uh, 1.41.4, and this was for the people, you know, making a lot of noise, but I could feel the pain, but I could still hear the noise. So this made me moving. David, how was it in your race? What, would, uh, what was the perfect pace for Tengele to have done that night? Because that, for me, that night in Zurich was your night. And if he just went a little too fast when he went 48-1. What would have been your perfect choice looking back on it? I think so, you know, it's not easy to say, you know, something would be perfect that day. I think, you know, if something goes wrong, you have to, to try and correct it. But then I am... Um, for me, I say it was too fast, but then yeah. I was also behind him, you know, so I think so he could not really manage to control himself. Yeah. Because I think also the, the tension was there to I mean, say, I'm that. going after the record. So for him, he was trying to help me, so I, I'm not claiming him for... No, I know that, but if you'd have had the perfect, if you'd have run 48.9 or 49.0, would that have been better for you that night? Yeah, it's, it's difficult to know, because uh, maybe it was a little bit too slow, maybe I could not even run... Uh, the record, so this is not it's not easy to make the judgment. Yeah, I would like to yeah. David's yeah. comment on that. I think also the crowd uh, is very important because uh, you know, like uh, even me when I was running, you know, my pacemaker would take me only to like at most 400 meter, uh, 450 to probably 500, and then the last 300. I was alone. So the only thing you could hear and uh, see is the crowd, the way they are cheering, you see them standing. You know, that's when now you realize that uh, you are running fast and, uh, you know, <laughs> and uh, you need to, you know, to, right. to, to, to push. So you, you, you feel like you are doing something, you, you know, something special. Like the one that I read uh, in uh, Berlin, you know, the crowd, the crowd ran crazy. I was like, oh my God, the last hundred, I said, I have to push because I feel that I'm going to do something. And uh, I think the crowd also, they are, they are, they are the one who are seeing the, the clock. So it's like they are telling you, you know, keep on, keep on. Thank you. Emmanuel? David, uh, do you think you deserve to be the athlete of the year and why? Okay. Do you think you deserve to be the athlete of this year and why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 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 the best answer. It, 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 it's hard to tell because uh, you, you, you can't say that I'm going to be there. I can't tell people that I'm the attitude of the year. You know, they saw others, many factors to consider. And uh, you know, many people also have achieved this year. And, uh, it also depends uh, the way they, they analyze the statistics, and uh, they are the one to decide. <laughs> Probably I'll vote for myself. <laughs> but though we also have the uh, competition is also there, like uh, David Olifar, you know, winning uh, the, uh, the whole series.
series, you know, the, like the thin uh, finals and in hurdles, running the uh, fourth and fifth fastest time in hurdles, and also Tokyo Son, you know, have really performed very well. Tyson Gay, so the competition is done. Mm. Any more questions? What would be the, the perfect balance between the two for regrets to go as fast as possible on 800? What would be the, the right balance for you? Uh, it's, it, you know, it, it's such an individual, it's such an individual thing because, you know, we have, we're all in the era now where um, we were at the beginning of it, but we're all in the era where actually you can do you can do the blood chemistry analysis, you can do the treadmill work, you can do the, um, you can do all the physiological stuff that will basically tell you that anyway. I mean, the great advantage, uh, if you ask me, the, the big advantage that these guys had was that actually the, the, the science of what they were doing was very much, is very much more exact. Uh, I mean, I was probably at the beginning, and I know you, we talked about this in Havana. So it, 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 you could you can say well maybe somebody should go out in forty nine and bits or or fifty and bits. It really depends on everything from VO two max through to the the economy, the economic use of the oxygen. You know, yeah, plenty of cleverer people than me will figure that out, and that's why we work with physiologists. So it, it's it's almost impossible to answer that question. I think in future, I've always suspected. However, that the improvements on the distance normally come by people covering the distance quickly early on. If you look, the, 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 the biggest shift before this guy in 800 meter running was in 36, 37 by Rudolf Harvick, the German athlete. He ran 146.6 and he did it by running very much quicker over the first phases of the race than anybody else was doing at the time. This guy made the next biggest breakthrough by doing the same, and he did that off a 400 meter. Uh, I did that in Oslo and then in, in Florence by covering the distance quicker than most people were prepared to do, so did he. So I think <coughs> there is a pattern of 800 meter records where people are prepared physically and mentally to commit early on in the race. But to, to, to get it down to the granular detail of whether it's 49 and bits or 50 and bits is, is so dependent on individual physiology. Well, I underline that, that this uh, analyze. Uh, looking into, <coughs> into the Montreal race, I was running the first lap on 50.58. But I had to move for the 300 Did you analyze the giddy for the 300. And then I had the motivation that what Hura was running together with me all the way down. And then he made the, he, he obliged me to, to keep going all the way down. It, it, this depend, it, like it's exactly like he said. It depends on many factors. How do you feel, how you train, how your motivation, how you are preparing for a psychological point of view. <laughs> it depends on many things. Many things. But one thing is, is important. When you are right to 700, this part of the curve, you say, oh my God, what is the finish line? <laughs> <laughs> Who was told in the finish line? <laughs> Wilson, you wanna? Yeah, I, I think I can say that, uh, you know, because we say 800 is not easy then, because I run in a different ways. You know, running, try to run even rest, maybe 50-50, which I could not make it. I went 49 and tried to still go fast. It's 51, the last one. But I was looking my times anyway. So no matter how fast I ran the first one, I still have two seconds, negative. 30 negative splits. I go too fast, I have three seconds. So it's more worse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so in this, to make it really even, so it's like anyway, you know, you have to decide if you are strong, if you can go 47, 400, and you can still maintain it. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can say, okay, I can run maybe 50, 50, I say also good luck. Because it's not easy to keep the same rhythm. 
because you know the wind is changing all the time. You go every corner. Yeah, like, you know, you <laughs> <laughs> so you get the wind again as you. You get the wind behind you. So it's it's moving, and then also the lactate is coming, and the <laughs> and the edge also is coming. We're, we're laughing because on the on the night he broke the record in Zurich, uh, I was sitting at home and I got a phone call from Andrews Brugger saying the weather in Zurich is really not very good. I'm thinking, no, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, uh, he said, uh, do you, you know, I'm told that we've had, we've been on to the Zurich Weather Centre and they've said that an hour later we'll be able So we don't have to say, so it's, it's too early to say that. Everybody runs 142 and get it. Sandro. David, uh, can, was, what was the moment in you in this season you thought now I can break the record? Was it after the race in Huizen when it was a remarkable evening when you were running so fast there? Oh, in Oslo. <laughs> you know, uh, I was planning uh, the way I started planning from last year. I started planning, you know, to, to go for the record after Yeti when I broke the African record that I stayed for 20, the last 25 years. So that is where now I start the uh, focus uh, to break the world record. And uh, I was starting my season just along very well. But when running, after running African Championship, that is when now I feel I'm ready because I just run very nicely in uh, attitude, you know, just feeling relaxing without uh, struggling too much. 142 in Nairobi. It's, uh, it's not easy. And then mm -hmm. I felt that I can go for the record. And then I told my coach, we discussed that we will not wait until we know the it is as a perfect weather and everything is perfect there. But uh, we, we, we discussed and then we said, we don't want to, to keep to say until the reality. Let us try in uh, maybe in Berlin. And let us not keep a uh, long time because I feel now. I'm I'm ready to, to go for it. So we try Berlin and things are possible. And that's how we plan to it. Also, a question to the <coughs> former <coughs> world record holders. Um, do you have any doubt who will be tomorrow evening the athlete of the year? Who is for you the athlete of the year? Alberto and Sandro. Yeah, please. What maybe. are your personal opinions? Maybe he's right here. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I would be maybe. delighted because it belongs yeah. to my event. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> uh, I can say it's, it's not easy. <laughs> but uh, because I think now, Tokelson has been doing very well. If you look at the history of the uh, Japan, yeah. he has been focusing <laughs> from Olympic World Champions, European Champion, Time on League. So I think it's, uh, it's going to be really up to the finish line, so I don't want to say today I have to wait until tomorrow, but uh, I don't know, I have you to put my money, so maybe <laughs> see, okay. I have to wait a little bit. I'm yeah. the one supposed to be in politics. <laughs> <laughs>
maybe different type of technology. Mm -hmm. Technology is different, yes. <laughs> so I think the, if we look at so I think the clothes, the shoes, yeah. and the truck, and then... And many things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then I think also he's a, he's a strong guy, you know, yeah. because I think when we were running, maybe we were not that strong, but uh, if you look at him, so he's powerful. He have a rhythm for 800. Which I think so, maybe in a way we were still just, because looking back the way when Rena was running, I just checked some videos and the way he was moving also was quite easy mm -hmm. and very strong. I come to Sepko, who was a little bit short like me, you know, so we just had quick steps, very fast. And then Rhodesia is long strides, very strong. So this, I think, if you have to look at so it's to analyze how people tell you, but then they, we have a different times and the different ways of training. And now I think it's more professional training than, if I look at back when I was training in Kenya, in my days when I was in school, so it was not more professional, but now people take to really <coughs> professional training. You know, my father's rolling in his grave at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> First time ever that the four of you are in yeah. the same room, so uh, yeah. it is a privilege for all of us to be here. So thank you so much for being here, everyone. Um, where do we start? <laughs> uh, first of all, congratulations to David for uh, for running. It was a good uh, <laughs> for running the the fastest uh, ever 800 meter, I think uh, you know all these people that are here uh, today. Uh, let me welcome Alberto Juan Torena from Thank Cuba. Thank you. Uh, senior partner. <laughs> uh, Lord Sebastian Coe from Great Britain. Mr. Wilson Keith Cater. And uh, David Rudisha, that I already presented to you. Uh, gentlemen, shall we go back in history? Where to start? Seb. No, no. Just start with the senior part. Yeah, let's start with Seb. Do you remember. Uh, when you broke the world record for the first time, what Alberta's standing world record was? <laughs> Not only do I remember it, but I remember seeing him in Montreal and thinking I'm in the wrong distance. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I knew exactly what it was. And uh, when, I, you know, when uh, I broke it in, in Oslo, I was, wasn't expecting to break it. And this was a record that Sensational. Sensational. Record. And Alberto, do you remember, remember. when uh, Sebastian broke your yes, world record? I have, I have, <laughs> yes, I know. I have a clear picture because I, won, I was in the United States. And then it was the first time that the Cuban track team competed in the United States. And the people who welcomed me said, I have two news for you. <laughs> 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 what, what happened? What news? Two, one, one is good and one is bad. The good is you are here. <laughs> <laughs> and the second one said, broke your world record last night. Yeah. And then I realized that this, this guy who I admire very much was a, a great runner, mm. a very good runner. But one thing, he is a good runner, but as a person, he's a better person as a runner. I had the privilege to be a friend of my, my, my brother, Sebastian <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you seem to know everything about the history of the 800 meter run. What do you remember of these two legends? I think uh, if I look back, so I don't remember that much because uh, maybe I was too young when Wanda ran, <laughs> ran or ran. And then when I was starting running, so Serco also was uh, retired. And that time I was in Kenya, so you know, the <coughs> television was not there, so I didn't see really see that much, but when I came to Europe, so the names was there. <coughs> and then when I started running, so 
my time was 145.70. And we were talking about 141.73. But it took me a while to say, okay, that record I think has been there too long. <laughs> <laughs> and I say I'm going after it. And I could, <coughs> because it was almost 16 years when I broke it. <coughs> and I was looking back. When he broke the record, I went more running very well. I was nine years. And then when I was still enjoying it, I said, maybe you can stay for another 16 yeah. years or so. <laughs> <laughs> so Rhodesia came, so I didn't enjoy that much to know the history of 800. <laughs> but then, saying that, so talking about the Olympic champion in 800. Lord Serko, no, you, you, you not a champion. Me, not. So, <laughs> So now I think so we are leaving the history of 800. If it's going to go continue, no medal in 800 meters in Olympic. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. the answer is going to answer that. So I think I, I move it this way, the history of 800. Yeah. Yeah. David, um, I don't think you knew that we were bringing these three legends here today. I think it's a bit of a surprise for you. So how do you feel being in the room sure. and this very special occasion? Yeah. <laughs> I'm very surprised to see the four world record sitting together uh, like this today. Of course, uh, I didn't know even uh, if Wilson, uh, although I know Wilson stayed in Monaco, but I didn't know the, the other two gentlemen are going to be here. So uh, it's, you know, I'm, I'm surprised and uh, I'm very happy. You know, it is it's not something happen easily to see people uh, sitting like this in a row. So it's, it's, it's very good. And, uh, I'm very happy to see that. Well, before we pass the floor on to uh, the journalists, um, Wilson had a little crazy idea before we got into the room, and he was uh, thinking of asking all you guys to try and run a 4 by 800 as a uh, in the opening <laughs> ceremony of the London 2012, so... Let's go to the real Yeah, okay. Can we include it in the program? Or <laughs> well, if, you, if you allow me to run on a bike, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have 115 years between the two of us. <laughs> any any oh questions from the floor? Neil? Um, Took you, your record lasted 16 years and your record lasted 13 years. How long do you think, how close do you think the record now is to its limit? I think that question would go to the Rutisha, <laughs> still running. You don't think? Uh, the thing I say is uh, because I don't know anyway uh, between Pandaren and Sepko how long it was. No, but mine was a little bit. Two years. 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 Carichava <laughs> durissimo. Durissimo. Oh, so, but if you ask me, right. this record belongs to the new generation, belongs to the future. 141, <laughs> 01. Oh, this belongs to the future, in my opinion. So, the question I think so is uh, if we can see, so it was 13 years, from 16 years to 13 years, so we are cutting three years, so maybe. <laughs> <laughs> So it's going to be, it'll be around a bit. Do you have any idea of limits? Would you? No, I don't think we're anywhere near them. I really don't. I think um, in, in 800, anyway, it's still possible to run maybe under one Yeah, I think so. And I think it's, it's still going. Yeah. You never yeah. know the limit of a human being. You never know. Mm. You never know. One more question? One more. I can have more than one. Question two. <laughs> Oh, I will remember, David, when I met you in, uh, in Lausanne, you explained me that for you it's important to be focused just on 800 meters to have good results 
at wing in the big uh, championships. Mm -hmm. You have the all three different profile from Red 800, 815, just uh, 800 for Wilson. I would like to. Yeah, I would like to know <laughs> if you have always the same opinion, and uh, what do you think about this idea to be focused on just one uh, one event, one distance? You know, I came to realize you know, it's not good uh, for me, like uh, the way. I the way I was thinking and the way we are thinking with my coach that uh, you know to get the good rhythm in 800 you have to just run 800 rather than you know, sometimes when you run like uh, 1500 and then you come back to 800 you might lose rhythm and then it will take you time to, to catch up again. Though I have been running some 400 just for the speed in the beginning of the season and then I focus on 800 and that is what I have been doing for the last day. Yes, and uh, it has been working very well for me because I get that ready, you know, the, I just run smoothly without uh, struggling because if I change speed and, uh, you know, it, it will give me a problem. Me? Mm -hmm. well, let's say that I, in my case it's a little bit different because I was a, a Guatemala, I was a front, I, I, my basic race was uh, 400 meters. And then I do not have the intention as a person, as an athlete, to compete in both event in Montreal. Mm -hmm. I was refused the first offer that my coach uh, <coughs> said to me, you want to run 800 and 400, I say no. Because I was afraid, because 800 was the first race, and, sec and 400 was the second one. <coughs> but that's why I always uh, talk, uh, talk about Italy. Italy is the key point of my career, because of my office of Marcelo, because the first time in life, that I ran 800 was in Formia with a great friend of mine, Elio Paponetti. <laughs> Elio Paponetti said, I am the Cristoforo Colombo one for <laughs> Because it was the first time I ran 800. And then I realized I have a chance to run because for the first time in my life, I ran 143, 145, 36. And then I convinced myself from a psychological point of view, from a sentimental point of view, whatever you want us to, to express. And then that's why I decided to run both. And then during Montreal, we changed. We changed a little bit the, the, the strategy and the philosophy of 100 million because I, we, first lap was faster than, 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 than before because I passed 50.5, 50.5, faster than the other runner because they ran 800 and 1500, but I was a, a sprinter. And that's why I give me the opportunity to run easy the, la the, the, the last lap. If you analyze the history, I never ran before in my life 800. Mm -hmm. Just two months before the Olympics, in Formia, in Havana, and in Montreal. Only two times, international <laughs> level. And, and after, once in... After Olympics? Yeah. After the Olympics? No. Not more. Not, not much. Not <laughs> only, for, only, for <laughs> only for you. Only for you. If, if you if you revise the, the, the history, uh, I ran in row every single day of athletic for the first day to end uh, to the to the end of the calendar because I ran 800 three times, 400 four times, and four by four. I am the only man who ran a complete calendar during the track and field in Olympic. The people who call Rome call me, hey, good morning, every day. <laughs> <laughs> they call me, hey, every day, because you came in the single best. You came every, every day to the stadium. <laughs> it's a good example of why the distance, unlike any other distance, attracts people from so many different backgrounds. If you're a 10,000 meter runner, you tend to know that you're going to be a 10,000 meter runner for much of your life. But, you know, this is a guy that ran fours. This is a guy that just runs eights. You sort of... I was coming up. Yeah, and, and, and I didn't start out anywhere near 800. I started out as a 3,000 meter runner. I'm running cross country. And I think that, uh, I think getting it right at 800 is, I think 800 is the toughest distance on the track to get it right. It demands so many different things. It demands the, the endurance of a 5,000 meter runner. It, in, it demands the speed of a, of a world, now a world class 400 meter runner. <coughs> And for me, running, it's, it's interesting listening to this. For me, I actually only felt comfortable at the distance when I knew I could run a 1500 as well. 
I knew that I was in very, very good shape for 15 when I knew that I'd also mastered the 800. So for me, I, it was really important to do both. I think one of the risks that we've had is that the, the distance itself has continued to get quicker. And these guys are as good as they'll ever be. But I think that when we took one of the rounds out of the 800 meters in Los Angeles, and we basically made it a three round competition with a day between the <coughs> semi and the final, it may have ceased to have become truly an endurance event. Now that's a very personal view, and I think that's why maybe although we've still got athletes at the very highest level, I think the strength in depth at the distance isn't as strong as it used to be. If you go back through the ranking list, 10th or 11th place now on that ranking list, I'm guessing, is not as quick as 10th or 11th 10 or 15 years ago, 20 years ago. And I think that's probably because there's, there's slightly less endurance needed because you don't have as many rounds to cover. That's a personal view. Yeah. Oh, no, for me anyway, so I could say, um, <coughs> talking about the rhythm of 800, and so it's very important because I like 800, except for say that is, is a special event. It's a sprint, it's a long distance, you know, so it's in between. <laughs> so to make the judgment, so it's not easy, but I was walking on that because I was running anyway indoors, 1,000 meters. I have a record for a thousand meters, but I was working on it to go slowly to 1500. But uh, what happened was, uh, so 98, when I was running well in 97, I got malaria in 98, so I lose all the training, and then also I had to start to build it up again. And run 15 and 8, so you know you have to run 1500 in 29, if you have to be number one, in the top five in the world in those days. So running 141 and running 329, I think so it was not going to be easy to make it even if I ran even 335. So, so that was the reason why I didn't want to move to 1500 because was, the standard was too high. A question to the three former world record holders. Uh, could David be the man, uh, the first man under 100 seconds, 140? Or is it too early to talk about this? If we really want to make his life impossible, we'll say <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. I, 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 I'm not going to say that because that's unfair but, uh, for him, but I think that my gut instinct, there's still some time to come out of that. So, of, of, of David's, of David's my opinion is <coughs> maybe it's too early because uh, now, you know, so t this year I'm moving now to World Championship next year and Olympic. So I think we still have to give time. But as I say, you know, the, the doors is open for somebody to run that time. But we are not putting pressure on him because I think, you know, anybody can come maybe <coughs> in two years' time because we can see there's the young people coming now, run around <coughs> too, but they didn't yep. create it. So, you know, it can be. 800, I think so. Nobody knows the secret of 800 because yeah. looking from... It's a tough distance. Because yeah. yeah. I think maybe for the last 30 years, so it's only four people there run also under 142. And uh, for the last 30 years or 40 years, so it's only four people broke those, uh, the record in 800. So I think so. it's, it's a little it's not easy even to, to break. Yeah, I know. I, I only want to add one thing. I am very lucky that these three men come up when I retire. <laughs> I'm lucky, I'm lucky. Yeah, we, felt, we felt that about you. Yeah, so that's very yes, Stefan? Uh, yeah, yeah a question to all the gentlemen. How important was the crowd, was the public in your specific races? Sorry? How important was the crowd, the public in, in your yeah. specific races? Very important, very important, very important. Particularly in a world record attempt because often you know, I think back to uh, when I broke the record in, in Firenze in uh, 81. You know, I ran 700 meters on my own. 
certainly 600 meters. So you, it's you know it, it often it's a lonely place. You're just running with no well, big one not around you. So actually having the crowd getting excited and knowing what you're doing, and following your progress on, with the clock is is a massive massive help. Yeah, it, it Our crowd is important. I remember in 1977. The, the Universiada in, in Sofia. Everybody was shouting, everybody mm -hmm. was making clap, you know. And, and this motivated you, you know. Gives you an inspiration, gives you a strength. Mm -hmm. Because the second one was Milovan Savic, 145.67. And then I was 143.44. I was running like set, set, almost alone, all the way down. But the, the audience, the people, the environment, your friends, you know. It gives you some inspiration and some extra strength to, to compete. And the crowd is, in my opinion, is part of, a, of our life, part of a record, part of everything when they are competing in the, on the track. There is an athlete that could very easily have been sitting at this top table at, at, at that stage, and that's, of course, Mike Boyd. Oh, my Boyd. We should mm -hmm. never forget, mm -hmm. you know, if, if I had a fifth... Oh, yeah. If I had a fifth great 800 meter run. Great. Who said that? Well, it's, I it's know him. It's, it's I know. It's Mike. I, know. <laughs> I was running Jolie by Jolie yeah. in, in, in Dusseldorf. Jolie by Jolie. Jolie. Uh, <laughs> the best ever. Yeah. <laughs> it was an yeah. excellent, excellent man. Excellent excellent. man. Yeah, it's terrific. Excellent yeah. man. Yeah. Excellent man. Yeah. So what's it? Yeah. yeah, I think so. The audience is really, you know, I mean, it's very important. Because I remember in Zurich, in Stockholm, Moscow, but in Zurich when I ran. Uh, 48.03 for the first 400, and uh, the last 50 meters, I think, was like another one kilometer. <laughs> 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 so, and this, I think, so, you know, and the cross was really there to cheer me, you know, so I could not feel the, the pain, but um, I managed to go home anyway with uh, 141.24, and this was for the people, you know, making a lot of noise, but I could feel the pain, but I could still hear the noise, so this made me move. How was it in your race? What, would, uh, what was the perfect pace for Tengele to have done that night? Because that, for me, that night in Zurich was your night. And if he just went a little too fast, when he went 48-1, what would have been your perfect choice looking back on it? I think so, you know, it's not easy to say, you know, something would be perfect that day. I think, you know, if something goes wrong, you have to, to try and correct it. But then I am... For me, I say it was too fast, but then yeah. I was also behind him, you know, so I think so he could not really manage to control himself. Yeah. Because I think also the, the tension was there to I mean, say, I'm going after the record. So for him, he was trying to help me, so I, I'm not claiming him for... Record. No, I know that, but if you'd have had the perfect, if you'd have run 48.9 or 49.0, would that have been better for you that night? Yeah, it's, it's difficult to know, because uh, maybe it was a little bit too slow, maybe I could not even run... Uh, the record, so this is not it's not easy to make cool. the judgment. Do you want David? Yeah, I would like David to yeah. comment on that. I think also the crowd uh, is very important because uh, you know, like uh, even me when I was running, you know, my pacemaker would take me only to like at most 400 meter, uh, 450 to probably 500, and then the last uh, 300. I was alone. So the only thing you could hear and uh, see is the crowd, the way they are cheering, you see them standing. You know, that's when now you realize that uh, you are running fast and, uh, you, know, <laughs> and uh, you need to, you know, to, 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 to push. So you, you, you feel like you are doing something, you, you know, something special. Like the one that I read uh, in uh, Berlin, you know, the crowd, the crowd ran crazy. Like, oh my god, the last hundred I said I have to push because I feel that I'm going to do something. And uh, I think the crowd also, they are, they are, they are the ones who are seeing the, the clock. So it's like they are telling you, you know, keep on, keep on. 